Hi, Walter here at Crystal Instruments. Today I'm going to discuss the technical details of preparing a modal analysis test. Experimental modal analysis is an important tool in many structural vibration analysis situations. This discussion will emphasize the necessary preparations to obtain high quality FRF data. This discussion will include the following aspects. Measurement location and direction, sensor selection, and support of the test structure. The purpose of modal testing is to acquire the FRFs based on the mesh model of the structure under test. This step is crucial because the success of modal analysis relies heavily on the quality of measured FRF signals. Without high quality FRF data, no matter how advanced or powerful the modal parameter identification algorithm is, it is not possible to obtain reliable modal parameters. Before starting the data acquisition, the degrees of freedom must be specified. Degrees of freedom is a term used to describe a point number and its direction. We use the term point to refer to a measurement location on the structure under test. At each point, there are three translational directions, X, Y, and Z. Usually, the structure under test is more complex than a simple plate. The modal software's geometry features handle this by using components. Each component has its own origin and Euler angle. This ensures each component can use its own local Cartesian coordinate system for directions. Regardless of the test type, sensors always play an important role in ensuring top quality measurement results. A commonly used sensor type is IEPE sensors. The dynamic range of an IEPE sensor can be a limiting factor in the quality of FRF measurements, so it must be ensured that the signal to noise ratio is as good as possible. IEPE sensors have a plus or minus 5 volt full scale voltage. A good rule is that the maximum voltage from a sensor should be at least 0.5 to 1 volt. Accelerometers usually have a high sensitivity around 500 to 1000 millivolts per G. Since IEPE sensors have a fixed measurement range, it is necessary to keep force sensors with several sensitivities in your lab equipment. With these force sensors, the proper sensitivity can be chosen for each test. This also applies to the impact hammer. It would be helpful to have a few impact hammers with different sensitivities and with different weights. Another consideration is whether to use a few sensors which will be roved over the structure or to use enough accelerometers so that all of the sensors can stay on the structure during the measurements. The choice here is often limited by the lab budget, but it's often necessary to use the latter approach to obtain top quality results. When roving the accelerometers, the structure is likely to produce some time variance. This is the mass loading issue and it can significantly affect the quality of our data. There are also TED sensors available. These are IEPE sensors with a built-in chip so the measurement system can read the model, unit, and sensitivity of each sensor. Now that we've selected our sensor approach, we must decide on our support structure. The support of the structure under test needs to be decided before the test. This is often referred to as the test boundary conditions. Typically, there are two choices for support free-free conditions, or as installed in operation. The main reason for choosing the first option is that it is most likely to produce good measurements. When the structure is supported freely, the vibration energy introduced into the structure by the excitation stays in the test structure until it has naturally decayed due to the damping of the structure. On the other hand, when a structure is connected to the world around it, a lot of the excitation energy will transmit to the surrounding structures, which usually means it is more difficult to obtain good testing results. To make the best possible estimation of the modal parameters of a structure, the structure under test needs to be supported in free-free conditions. While for troubleshooting purposes, the modal analysis can be carried out in a structure installed in its normal operation environment. For free-free boundary conditions, typically it is achieved by suspending the test structure on soft bungee cords or springs. Depending on the size and weight of the test structure, the bungee cords can vary in size and stiffness. The suspending bungee cords should be soft enough so that the vibration levels of the six rigid body modes are less than a tenth of the first flexible mode. This is particularly important when testing and suspending long slender objects. In general, this type of structure should usually be hung vertically to make it more likely that the rotational rigid body mode along the long axis becomes sufficiently low. For long slender structures hung horizontally, there will be a large risk that the rotational rigid body mode will exhibit a relatively high frequency due to the small mass moment of inertia. When using bungee cords to support the structure under test, the bungee cords should not touch the structure directly. This is likely to add damping to the structure. Instead, the structure under test should be hung in regular rope of thin steel thread, which is then connected to the bungee cords. 